My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. Many people know me as the AR guy or the AR comics guy. And so what better way to share the work that I do than to open up the hood of some of my comics and actually teach you how they're made. And so in this part three of my comic making series, I decided to make a course on augmented comic strips. And so in this course, we will learn how to make a comic strip come to life with augmented reality. And we'll take a comic and we will augment it using animation, 3D models, sound, and other digital elements so that it's an immersive experience that goes beyond just looking at pictures and words. You could hear it, you could feel it. And so with that, you could check out more information at stuckonanisland.com slash courses, and it'll be available in Skillshare. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here, you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly, and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com, and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, Follow me on all the social nets. And so, what is augmented reality comics? Essentially, comics that come to life with digital elements. Uh, you can use sound, animation, user interactions, and volumetric data to enhance the storytelling experience. But ultimately, it's uh, making comics more immersive by adding digital elements to it, rather than leaving the digital elements behind. And so, augmented reality comics are comics that use digital elements as a way to enhance the storytelling experience. And it's really all about enhancing that experience, making it more immersive. Normally digital tools are used to create comics, but then they go to print and ultimately leaving the digital experience behind. And what AR does is say, we're not leaving the digital experience behind, it's actually going with the print media. And so web comics are a great, you know, use of digital technology but many comic book lovers want to have that tactile feel from the pages. And so a way, a way to have the webcomic feel and also the a digital feel with something tangible, you, you get AR comics. And so that's something that I'm excited to share along with you. And so here is a AR comic example that I have that I work pretty hard on. It's from my series Island Fever. And not only is it based off of a web comic that I created, but it's also a, an example of the potential that AR comics has. And so with this, you'll see a variety of different things that you can incorporate into AR comics. And really, I wanted to push the envelope of what an AR comic can do and what it can't do. And so I think this is a great example, and I hope you enjoy it. It's Portland, Oregon. <laughs>
<laughs> huh? Hey there. I'm the wandering artist, formerly known as Stuck on an Island. You could call me Stucky. For the past three or four years, I've been following a group of young ones on this small island in the Pacific called Moovea. As I followed them, I began to write about them in my blog, The Illtopian. The one I paid the closest attention to was this boy here, Roscoe Thomason. Fight! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Ah! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! You got it! You got it! You got it! You got it! Finish him! Excellent! Over time, I began to grow fond of this little guy. He really reminds me of myself growing up. He's a pretty fun kid to be around, and has a wonderful sense of humor. I just don't but I worry a lot about him. This place really doesn't bring out the best in him. Or at least they don't see him the way I do. understand him. Blah 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 They don't see all the potential he has. Blah 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 Oh man I'm getting real tired. Hey, watch this. Flex! Or the fun-loving free spirit. Three, two, one, let's go! Oh my gosh, what in the world are you guys doing? That has astronomic aspirations. Luckily, he loves the challenge. He never gives up, never surrenders. Because that's what dreamers do. Hey, look at what I can do. Ah, oh, crap! Ha ha. Uh, this sucks. Anything you can do, I can do better. Oh no! <sighs> this is your fault. Okay, so based on the demo that you saw, what did you notice? Was there anything you thought was cool or interesting? 
use this as an example of what you can do with augmented reality comics. Uh, this may inspire you to uncover the potential of comics with AR in general. Because it incorporated sound, it incorporated 3D models, 2D animation, 3D animation, particle effects, you know, user interactions. Like it, it I think it covered a whole bunch of different things, depth and volume. Uh, the, really the potential is limitless. And I hope that this served as a, a reference point for you as we go down this journey of creating an augmented reality comic. And so now that we have an idea of what AR is, let's go ahead and plan out some augmentations. Because that's really the big thing that we need to do is plan out augmentations so that we know what we're trying to create. And so plan out what augmentations, right? And so what we have right here is we have the template of the comic that we've been making and using. And so I have a black and white version and then I have a color version. And so one of the beauties of augmented reality is that we could actually use the black and white version and in AR, you could see the color version. And not only that, but you could see the color version come to life in a very interesting way. And so what I have right now is I have a Google Doc open and I always like to use Google Docs. It's just really easy to use. Um, an alternative would be like OneNote or any of the other things. And I'll just create a bullet point list for my roadmap. And so all we're doing is trying to plan out what are the, some of the ideas that we could use to uh, create our augmentations. And so first and foremost, we could use, uh, we could turn black and white pages to color. And really the black and white pages to color, that really allows for you to save time and save a lot of energy printing. And that, it, yeah, it just, it just works very, very well. Uh, just, you know, you get to save money uh, because color printing is really, really expensive especially compared to black and white printing. And so that works. We could add voiceovers for characters, which is a great thing. You know, when we're talking about making something more immersive, really making something more immersive is just adding more senses to the experience. And so when we're looking at a comic, you obviously can see the comic and read it. And so that's your eyes. If you print it out, you get the tactile fling of touch and so that's the, that's the touch that you get. And with animation, you get that sort of motion and that time. Uh, but then, you know, adding sound allows you to have more, uh, you get to add your ears to the experience. And so now you're making it even more immersive because you're, you, know, you have sight, you have touch, and you have sound now. And so more senses are incorporated into the comic experience, making it more immersive. And so adding voiceovers is great. And then we could add, um, we could add depth. So add depth with 3D models. I like that. And then we could also add, um, add animation. So just making things pop. Uh, you know, making those things pop that that's, that's a, that's a really good thing. It's really easy. And so, um, and so for the most part, we have, uh, we have some really good things to, we could include, I think, yeah, turning, so turning black and white pages into color, uh, add voiceovers to characters, uh, add depth with 3d models, add animation. And I think that's for the most part that that could be. That could be it for right now. And so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this. And so for an activity for you, uh, use a text editor or a paper to jot down some ideas for elements you want to augment in your comic. And that would be good. And so back as I'm thinking about this, right? Uh, what if I also wanted to add some animated elements to the last panel? And so we'll say, we have uh, the anger symbol 
on Roscoe, which is one of my characters, uh, on Roscoe, you know, animates. And so we could add we could add that to it too, you know. So it, it's it's all about really bringing some of these panels to life, just making it come to life in a very interesting way. And so now let's go ahead and separate the comic elements. And so separating different elements of the comic, like the speech bubbles and the comic panels, uh, and we could do this to make them easier to augment. And so feel free to create new elements as well uh, to add to your experience. And if not, you could just create some interesting uh, elements with uh, this. And so what I'll do is I will open up my PSD file that I have. And this PSD file has a whole bunch of different stuff. The way it's set up is I have all the different files here. And each one of these files is in a, a smart object. And so if I open up the smart object, then I have my speech bubbles, as you can see here. And I could actually make these all one image. So I could turn these into smart objects. So boom. Like that. And convert this to a smart object. And so now I have one smart object for that, another smart object for that. And then I could go into this panel and here's the artwork that I have for my panel. And so I could just export these all out as individual PNGs and I'll do that. So export out, export as, and each one of these will be individual PNGs. And you want to do PNGs because they have a transparent background. And so having that transparent background makes a, makes a load of a difference. And so I'll just go to export and I'll go to my comic strip. I'll go to panels. So individual panels. I'll just keep it organized. I'll create a folder called panel one. And I'll select the folder, and that is panel one. And so hopefully when I open it, I'll have individual panels. And then after individual panels, I'll have panel one, and that is it right there. Nice. And so I will, yeah, I'll just save that. I'll go to panel two, open that up. And again, I'll, I'll combine these into a smart object. So I have two panels right here, or two images. So I'll export as, and from there, I go to export, comic strip, individual panels, and this one will be panel two. And so I will save that. Now time for panel three. Same thing, I will do convert to smart object and then convert to smart object. So now I got some more like that. So then I'll go and I will export these out as PNGs for panel three. So click export, comic strip, Panel three and select folder. It'll save it. Click yes. Now time for panel four. So panel four. I'll go to convert to smart object and then convert to smart object. So now I have this and that, you know, Go ahead and export it out.
and this will be panel four. And last but not least, we have panel five. So panel five, again, convert to the smart object right here. And for this, there is something that I do want to add. I do want to modify. And it's this, uh, this right here. And so what I want to do is I want to take this, this thing here, I want to take it out. I want to augment this by itself. And so what I'll do is I will go through and I will copy this. And I'll say, I will cut it. I can cut it like that. And I'll convert this to a smart object. So convert to smart object. And then I'll add this to this here. And then what I'll do is I'll actually hide this. And I'll click save on it. So now I have this smart object here. What I'll do is I'll just take some of that, that black off of it. Let's with the eraser tool, delete some of the black. And I'll just make it a little smaller, modify some of the elements just so that it works. And I think I'm good. Yeah, look at that. And so what I'll do is I'll save this and I'll call this anger, anger symbol, and I will have that be like this. Perfect. So now what I could go through and I get, oops. Symbol. There you go. So now I could go through and I could save each one of these. So I'll go through and save this. So I'll go to export as. And then export. We go to comic strips, individual panels, and then we have panel five like that. Select that folder. Perfect. And so now let's see here. I have, I should have all my panels in, in here. So panel one, have those. Panel two, perfect. Panel three, yes. Panel four, yes. And panel five, yes. Looks good. Looks good. And so now that we have the assets that we're ready to use, it's time to set up Unity and get it all put together. And so first we're gonna set up Unity, download it, install it, and open up a new project in the Unity game engine. And then after that, we'll get the other stuff moving. So for those that are unaware, uh, unity.com is uh, the place where you can go to get the Unity game engine. And so from there, you go ahead and get started and it will take you to plans and pricing. Instead of using the teams, you use individuals. And from here, you'll go to student or personal. I would suggest personal unless you're a student, uh, but then it does take a little while for you to get signed up for it. And so go ahead, just click get started. And you can either choose returning user or first time user. It pretty much takes you to the same place and you're gonna download the Unity Hub anyway. And so you just click start here, agree and download, and then it'll allow you to download it already downloaded it and after that it takes me to my unity hub which is this right here and so as a brief rundown we have our projects panel which is where all our projects are as you can see i got tons of projects and this is where you can create new projects as well in the learn tab this is where you can learn more about the unity game engine 
with either projects and other tutorials and they have a lot of stuff so highly i highly recommend it uh, the community tab is where you can check out the blog and the forums and all the the live help stuff and uh, q and a's and stuff so this is where the people gather and then installs is where you install the unity editor and so the unity editor is the thing that you work on the projects with and the unity hub is how you open up your projects and and organize all your assets and stuff and so you just go to add and i highly recommend the recommended release uh, but I already have it downloaded and if you want to use an older release feel free to use one of the LTS ones so 19, 2019 or 2018 but if you're just now getting started I highly recommend using 2020 right now as the recommended release you can use pre-releases but I wouldn't you know we're, we're just not there yet so I wouldn't try those out yet and so you just select the the recommended release here and you click next and you make sure that the dev, dev tools and the Android build support and the iOS build support is selected. If you've never done that before, make sure to do that. And then you click next and then you go to, uh, you agree to the terms and all of that stuff. And so with Android build support and iOS build support, uh, AR is primarily made for mobile devices. And so you want to choose either an Android or iOS device uh, for it. I recommend using both of those because that way you could work on both devices at once. Um, but the Vuforia SDK and everything will help as well. And so after you click next on all that, you click done and you, um, like I said, next, and then you agree to this and you click done and then it will download it. And so I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to go through the hassle of it. Uh, but once you have everything downloaded, then you go to the arrow and you click new project. And you have these templates here. I wouldn't worry too much about these. Just use a basic uh, 3D template because that's that's the one that really matters. Uh, you just start off fresh with a with a fresh build. Make sure not to use 2D. And, um, and yeah, just use the 3D one. And then I'll say AR comic strip tutorial. So I have my AR Comic Strip Tutorials, the name of the project that I'll call it, and it saves in my Unity uh, file location. So I'll click Create. And so once it's open, there's a couple of things that you want to do before we get started. And first thing is you go to File, Build Settings. You want to change this from uh, PC Mac to iOS or Android and that's just because uh, AR isn't really supported for Mac and PC it's really only supported for mobile devices and so if you have a, a PC I highly suggest using Android uh, if you have a, a iPhone then you could use uh, iOS but for the most part Android build settings is always the best to use for me uh, when I'm developing even for other stuff because it's just easy there's less bugs with it so I just click switch platform and once you switch the platform the icon will go from PC Mac and Linux standalone and the icon will be right here for Android as you can see there boom and so then we'll go to player settings and there's a couple of settings that we want to change so in the player we want to go to color space under rendering and we go to linear we'll change that to linear just because it helps with the better lighting And then after that, what we'll do is we'll go to uh, quality. We'll change the quality to a uh, medium. So that way it, it renders better. It's less taxing on the, on the devices that we have. And for the most part, we are set up to go. And so just a brief overview of what Unity is. And so we have the hierarchy, which has all our game objects in it. And each one of these are game objects when you see this icon here. And you could create a new one if you want by just right clicking and you could go to 3D objects or lights or create empties. And each one of these game objects is going to be in our scene. And so the viewport or the scene, the viewport is where we have all of our objects in it that we could see. And so pretty much anything that's in here is in here. Anything that's in here is going to be in here. Uh, then we have our game view, which is where we see stuff from our camera. And so if you click the main camera, you'll see the main camera is the game view that we have and then we have our inspector which has all our settings for each one of our game objects and so our game objects are made up of different components and each component like the 
main camera has a camera component. The directional light has a light component. If I wanted to add some stuff to the empty game object, then I could have any more stuff, like I could have the audio source. Now this is an audio component, and I could just rename this called audio. And it's, it's very flexible and stuff like that. And what I'll do is I'll just delete this anyway. But it's very flexible, and you could convert, you could add more components to different, um, different game objects. And then below here, we have our projects tab, which allows us to uh, have different files and, and organize our files and stuff in our project. So this is pretty much where all our files are. And then the console is where we get like all our errors and stuff like that. And so that helps because this is a developer tool. And so with that, we have, um, we're ready to start adding some AR stuff into the scene. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to import the Vuforia engine SDK. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable our uh, webcam to use some of the AR features. And so uh, Vuforia is great because it allows us to use the webcam instead of having to build to a, a smartphone in order to test all the stuff. And so uh, we'll download and import the Vuforia Engine SDK and enable it to, uh, to do some AR stuff. And we'll just start bringing stuff to life. So it's pretty easy. And so here we are. We're at developer.vuforia.com. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to um, download the Vuforia engine uh, for Unity. And so we'll just click Downloads. And we'll go and we'll choose uh, Add Vuforia Engine to a Unity project, which is the one that we want. We don't want the Android or the iOS because that's not for Unity. So we want the one that supports Unity. And when you do, you'll have to sign in. So it's a free license or stuff. So like, feel free to just uh, sign up for an account and just download the download the engine and what i'll do is i'll go to my ar comic strips i already have it downloaded and so uh and so i'm not going to download it again but uh once you have it downloaded then you go back to unity and you go to assets and you go to import package custom package and then we want to go to our our folder where we downloaded it right here and we'll just double click it we'll import We'll have a message to update. We'll say yes. And once it's downloaded, you will be able to see a new folder called editor here. And then you'll also see a new, uh, in the windows before your configuration right here, you'll see this available. Just go ahead and click it and we'll just go ahead and set some stuff up. So the first thing that we'll need to do in Vuforia configuration is add a license. So we'll click add license here. It will take us to our portal. I already have a license set up for my AR comics. And so I'll just go ahead and copy and save it. But you just essentially get development key. You title it, you click the checkbox right here, and then you click confirm. That's pretty much it. And it's free to use because we're just developing. And so we're not actually submitting to an app store or anything like that. So again, I'll just copy it. And I'll go back to Unity and then I'll go to the space and I'll click paste and that's it. I'm set up with my license. And so the next thing that we'll do is we want to turn off track device pose. And all this says is that the reason track device pose will be on is if you use surface tracking and it extends the functionality of tracking for AR experiences. And so the way it works is when you shine your phone on the ground and then you lift your phone up, it will no longer be looking at the ground so it doesn't have anything to track. And so it's saying that it's gonna assume that the ground is still there and any sort of movement that you take uh, still keeps the AR experience there. We don't want that for image targets or comics because when you're not looking, when the phone camera is not looking at the, the image, we don't want the, the experience to continue. And so we wanna turn that off to turn off that functionality. Essentially, you can't have surface tracking and uh, image tracking working at the same time if you want to use AR comics. You kind of have to do it differently. And so uh, if you don't know what surface tracking is, then that's, there's another tutorial that I have that goes over that more in depth. But for this, it's all really about um, image tracking and making comics. And so we just turn that off, make that sure that's off with image tracking. Um, if it's surface tracking, then you want to make sure that it's turned on. And then lastly, since we're going to be testing this out on webcam, you want to make sure that play mode type is at webcam. 
And so we want the webcam to be our, uh, be our device. If you're doing it for an iPhone or an Android phone and you're going to be testing that way, then this really doesn't matter. But uh, it cuts your time into a fraction because you don't have to build to the device just to test it. And so I have multiple webcams, so just make sure you choose the right one and we kind of go from there. So now that we have Vuforia set up and we have Unity set up, it's time to set up our image target. And so what we're going to do is we're going to import the image, the comic image as either a PNG or a JPEG, and then we're going to create an uh, image target in Unity based off of it. And then we're going to set up our environment and everything. And so this is pretty standard for making image targets and uh, we'll be able to test our first AR experience with this. So I'm in Unity right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my folder with all my with my comic strip stuff, and I'm actually going to use my black and white comic because I didn't want to pay for printing that is uh, uh, in color. I didn't want to pay for color printing. And so through AR, I could actually show the color the way I want it to. And so before I do that, I'm going to go to Assets, and then I'm going to just create a new folder. So right-click Create and go to Folder. And I'm going to call this images. And so I'll go into images and I'll go to my folder again that has all my uh, comic stuff. And I'll just take that black and white picture and I will add it to my uh, Unity project in the images folder. Just drag and drop. And then we'll have to change some settings because it does look kind of distorted right now. And so what I'll do is I'll go to default and I'll go to sprite 2D UI and I'll change it by clicking apply. And now you'll see how it changed it to a different aspect ratio and it looks just a little different. And so now our image target is there. The next thing that we'll do is we'll, I'll go to scenes and as a, as a reference, you don't wanna all, you don't wanna work in the sample scene. You wanna make a new scene and, uh, and start fresh from there. And so what I'll do is I'll create, right click, I'll go to scene and I'll call this AR comics comic strip and then I'll double click and you'll see that it changed to AR comic strip right there so there we go we got a new scene and so before we start adding the image target there's a couple of things that we need to do uh, the first thing is we want to replace the main camera which is used for games we want to replace it with an AR camera which is used for AR and all the AR camera does is it um, it emulates or replicates what you would see in your phone or your webcam camera. And so uh, there's some extra components on it. And so we'll just go ahead and go to right click before it engine AR camera. So we have that and we just delete the main camera. Next thing we do is we add a reference for the image target by going to Vuforia engine and then image target right there. And what I'll do is I'll call this AR comic strip say underscore one, just in case we make another one. And so from there, we I could double click to, to go closer into my era comic. And I could turn off gizmos to get rid of that, that icon there. And so that's a, it's a blank image right here, it's just a blank reference. And so what I can do is I could say, okay, the image that I had, which is over here in image target behavior under my uh, era comic, I could go to image and I could select the image right here, texture, and there we go. We got it. So I'll zoom in and there we have, we have our image right there. So it's literally the same image that we have here and uh, it's making it a reference. So this pretty much makes this a QR code that you could use. And so now that we have that, I'll go ahead and save. And the last thing I could do is I could add a, I could add a cube and the cube's pretty big right now. So I'll go ahead and scale it down using the scale tool, scale it down and notice how, when I added the cube, it made it, it added it under my AR comic strip game object. So when you drag it in, it makes it a child of it. And anything that's a child of the game of the image target will show up. If it's not a target of the of the game object, then it's not going to appear as an augmentation. So you need to make sure that all of your augmentations that you're trying to do are under the game object as a child of the game object. And if they aren't, then they won't show up.
And so before I actually test this out, what I'll do is I'll add a new material. So I'll go to create a new folder, call it materials. And really this is just to make it, um, this is really just to make it organized. And I'll go and create, and I'll go to material, and I'll call this red. So I'll just make a red material. I'll go to my inspector, and I'll change it to red, and then I will call it red, just like that. And so I'll have a red cube, and it's a child of my game object, which is my image target right there. And so I have my comic printed out right now. And so when I test it out, I'll be able to test it out. Uh, with some augmentations. So here we go, test it out, and we have it working. Perfect. So we are actually using AR for our comic. It's not really enhancing the story, but it's AR for a comic now. We got an AR comic. So now it's time to make it actually a lot cooler. So now that we have the augmentations working, right? The next thing we want to do is we want to add an animation timeline. What this will do is it will uh, allow us to make a sequence that we can control. And so we're going to build an animation timeline that controls the sequence of events in the augmented reality experience. Uh, it's typically, I always like to think of uh, augmented reality comics as a way to uh, animate comics. It really the bridges the gap between like my love for comics and animation. And so I could really control both with this timeline. And so with my timeline, right, I'm starting to think of the timeline. The first thing that I want to do before I start doing anything crazy is I want to right click and create a new empty object uh, as a child of my uh, AR comic and I'll call this AR content like that. The next thing I'll do is I will go to window and I'll go to package manager and in the registry, so I'll go to registry, Unity registry, and I'll make sure that I have the Unity timeline downloaded. I have it downloaded, but if you hit, if you don't, feel free to download it. And then afterwards, once you have it downloaded, the next thing you can do is you can go to window, sequencing, and then timeline. And you can just drag that down here. And so now that we have our timeline, the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to create a new empty object again. And this one we're going to call uh, AR Comics Strip Timeline, like that. And in our assets folder, we'll just create a new folder and we'll call this animation. And we'll go inside of it and then we'll click comic strip timeline right here, our game object. And we're just going to click create in our timeline and this will create a new game object and it's going to create it in our animation timeline like that. So we'll click save and you'll see there is a new animation timeline. And so the way it works is whenever you click on a game object, you can create a new timeline. And uh, as if there isn't a timeline here, you'll notice that it'll say create one. But if you have a game object that already has one, then it will appear here. And so because of that, you can end up making multiple timelines that you don't want. So typically I'll have one game object that holds all the timeline assets and pretty much is the timeline. And so in order to stop it from whenever you click another game object, in order to stop it from leaving this, you just click the lock button and that'll keep it there. So notice how nothing changes now. Perfect. And so the second thing is I want to lower the frame rate to 24 frames per second, just because we don't need to be at 60 frames per second for this. So standard animation is 24 frames. So I'd like to keep it at that. And the preference pages, you could change it to seconds. You could change it to pan or scroll. It's up to you. Allow audio scrubbing. You could do that. It's all up to you in terms of what you want to do with uh, your preferences. That's what I like to use. And so the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go to images 
and I'm going to import all the assets that I need for my uh, my game objects. And so each one of these, I have my individual panels. And so I could actually go through and say, okay, I want all, all of these folders. I could just drag and drop them into here. Like that, just like that. And so now I just go through and each one of these, I'll just convert or change these from a default to Sprite 2D UI. And I'll go to the next panels, Sprite 2D UI. Same thing here. Same thing here. And same thing here. Perfect. And so now that I have those in there, right? The next thing I'll want to do is I want to get organized. So I'll have, I'll create a couple of empty objects and one of them will be for panels one through four or one through five. So panel one, so panel underscore one. And then I'll have one for panel two, three, four, and five. Like that. And then afterwards, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just lower my timeline and I will start adding all my elements to my timeline. So I'll get rid of the queue because I don't need that right now. And I'll just take all these assets. Well, I'll take each one individually and I'll show you why I don't wanna select them all and drag them in there real quick. So if I do that, it'll wanna create an animation sequence. We don't wanna do that. And so in order to not create an animation sequence, you don't select each one of these. What you do is select them one at a time and I'll just place them in there one at a time, just like this. So I'll go panel one has all these assets right here. And then I'll go to panel two has this one and that one. Panel three, this, this, and that. Panel four, this, this, and that. Lastly, panel five, we do this, this, and that. Perfect. So now I could go through and I could select all these. And I could just rotate them and make them smaller. So for the rotation, I want to have that be 90 so that it's facing flat. And then from there, I want to have it smaller, much smaller. So I'll have it be, we'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll raise it up so, so that I could see everything. And we'll say, safe to say this is around Mm, yeah, like point, we'll say 0 0.15 is probably the best. So 0 0.15, whoops, wait, point zero one five. I mean, so point zero one five, point zero one five, and then for here, point zero one five. Perfect. So it's slightly larger than the actual panels that we have, but with augmentations, right? Like you want it to be larger than life. So uh, I, I don't see any problem with that. And so now what we could do is we could just go through and uh, orient these and organize these the best way that we possibly can. So panel one, we'll just select all those. And then we will have, actually in panel one, I could just use the panel since it's all in the center, have the panel just go up just like that. And then panel two, I'll go up and over. 
uh, panel three is down at the bottom. So I'll move that over there. Panel four is directly at the bottom. So I'll do that. And then panel five is in the bottom right, just like that. And so notice how like there's a whole bunch of different, you know, these are raised up right now and there's speech bubbles and everything, but everything sort of like overlaps on each other. The thing about this is that there are, there's orders of layers that you could use. So we have, uh, make sure that the panels, the bottom most layer is the one that shows at the top. So you want to make sure that the panels, the artwork is going to be at a higher point in the hierarchy than the actual speech bubbles. Cause you want people to see the speech bubbles, right? And so after that, you also want to make sure that each one of the panels that you have, the panel images, you'll see that there's an order layer. And so that order layer is very important because it's the order layer at which things are rendered. The higher the priority, the more likely you'll see it. Uh, and it won't be, it won't be occluded and stuff. And so, uh, and so one of the things that you could do is you could lower the actual image here. So you just make it just a little lower than the actual speech bubbles that you have like that. And then you could turn that to layer one and notice how it, it completely covers the, the other layers, right? So that's uh, we could actually go ahead and change that. And so actually I'll go ahead and just raise this up just a little bit and then I'll select all the other, I'll select all the speech bubbles, all the speech bubbles and effects, and I'll raise those up and I'll actually make those layer two. When I make those layer two, they appear now. And so notice how when they were at layer zero, no matter how high I lifted them, they weren't showing up. And that's because it's rendering the layer one first above the layer zero. And so when you make these layer two, it makes them available like that. And so I'll just lift it up a little bit and then I will have them essentially, I'll have them at an angle. So I'll have them at like an angle. So instead of, instead of it being 90 degrees, I'll have this at 80 degrees. So it gives it, so it gives them a little effect of popping out. Actually, I'll make it a, a slightly larger angle like that. So I'll do 75 like that. Perfect. So now I have my speech bubbles. I have all the things that I need. So now it's time to, and well, we'll make it actually, we'll make these larger as well, just cause. And so now what I can do is I could go through and I could uh, set up all the different uh, just lay out everything the way it should be. And so I'll just go through and I'll have this. I'll just go through and I'll just move these in the areas that they need to be at. So we have Roscoe and this is what Roscoe's saying. So we have this one and then we'll just move over and have him saying it like this. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to replicate what is shown here. And so what I'll do is I will just have that side by side. And I'll, all I'm going to do is try to replicate what you see in the, the layout of the panels and all the speech balloons and everything. And so we have this one, this one is up here. This right here is over here and that is like that. We have this over here. This right here. And then I'll just lift this up here. And I'll have this down here like that. So there we go. We have our comic. It really is kind of coming to life too. It's really nice. I like it.
So what I'll do is I'll save. And I should be good with this. So yeah, so let's go ahead and test it out. See the AR comic come to life with uh with, with color right now. So we have our AR comic. And look at it comes to life with color. That's pretty cool. And see how it sort of has that depth look to it. So it really kind of pops off the page. That's really nice. I really like that. Nice, nice, very nice, very nice. So that was pretty successful. What I'll do is I'll change my aspect ratio to uh, portrait or to landscape, 2019 landscape, just to just to make it easier to look at. And so now what I could do is I could start actually syncing up the animation with this. And so now, now that I have this sync uh, set up, what I'll need to do is I need to connect my image target with controlling my animation. We don't really have anything set up on it already yet, but, uh, but we will later. We'll be able to add some extra stuff to it. But before you do that, what I want to do is I'll just go to my comic strip game object and what this says is on target found is when the camera sees the image target it'll do something and then on target lost means that when the camera doesn't see it or it's not in the camera's view it'll it'll do something else and so what we want to do is we want it to when it sees it we want the the comic strip to actually play the comic strip timeline and when we don't see it we're going to have it pause the timeline and so these are just functions and actions that we could control uh, using the AR uh, triggers and so we'll just go here and we'll add that there we'll add our timeline to here so pretty much the game object with the timeline on it we want to add that to these things here and so we we'll go to no function and we'll go to playable director and we'll go to play and then we'll go to playable director and we'll go to pause and so this says that when uh, when the image target is found then it'll play the playable director on this game object and it will go play. And when it is lost, it will go to the playable director on this game object and it will pause it. And that's pretty much how it works. And so now it's time to add some audio elements to this. And so we made the black and white turn to color. So now it's time to add some audio elements so that we make it more immersive and engage with sound. And so we're going to add sounds to our experience to engage our ears and make the AR experience more immersive. And so first we're going to record voiceovers for the characters and include background music to really set the scene. And so in order to record stuff, right, what we're going to need to do is we're going to actually need to, um, I mean, we'll just need to record. And so I have a program called Audacity that I use, and it's a very easy program to use. It's, it's free. And so... Uh, feel free to go to Audacity or use Adobe Edition or any of those. And before I show you, you can go to Audacity. You can just Google it. And it's a free open source program that you could use for Mac and Linux and Windows. And uh, and allows you to create audio files. And so I have it open right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look at my comic strip. And so I'll have my comic strip open, just like that. And I'll have this sort of tied to this to here. Have this tied to here. And then what I'll do is I'll actually show a recording of me actually recording it. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So I have my audio right here. I got my script. I got my audio manager right here. I got the blue snowball connected. And so I could test it. Test, test, test. One, two, three. Test, test, test. Now I'll play it. Get test. Get tested. Test, test, test. One, two, three. Test, test, test. Perfect. So I'll just go ahead and delete that. And here we go. Time to time to lay these audio tracks down. And so I'll go ahead. Hey, 
Look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo! What? Dummy, that's a cow. A cow? Psst. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says Moo. So I call it a Moo. Out of respect, you know? No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. Whatever, fool. It says Moo. I call it Moo. So it's a moo. That's that. And that's it. That is how you record something. So I'll go ahead and click stop. Now that I have that done, I'll go over to it. And we'll go through and try to space it out. Go ahead. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo! What? Dummy, that's a cow. A cow? Psst. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says Moo. So I call it a Moo. Out of respect, you know? No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. Whatever, fool. It says Moo. I call it Moo. So it's a moo. That's that. Just like that. So what I could do is I could trim off the edges a little bit. So I don't need it to be that long there. And get trim this off at the beginning too. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. So I trim that off there. And so we're at about 55 seconds. And I kind of want the space in between to be a little less. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. And so I'll make this a little less. So I'll just delete that space. Moo! That thing over there. Moo! I'll delete this space here. Actually, I'll get, yeah, that's a good five seconds. So. What's a moo? That thing over there? Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo! What? Dummy, that's a cow. A cow? Psst. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says Moo. So I call it a Moo. Out of respect, you know? No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. Whatever, fool. It says Moo. I call it Moo. So it's a Moo. That's that. So, got that. What I'll do is I'll save it. So I'll save the project. Click yes. And I'll go to my projects here. Save it. AR Comic Strip. And I'll say AR Comic Strip. Moo recording. Let's 
save that and then I'll go and I'll click export as and I'll export as a WAV file and the WAV file is a is probably the best file that I, you could record in and I'll just click save do that and so now I'll just go ahead and close that and I'll go to my files here and I should have a new couple of files so I'll have my Looks like I, I didn't save it to the WAV file that I needed to save it. With. So I'll resave it. I'll export it as uh, AR Comics demo. Oh, yeah. That's why. So I have my AR Comics demo, but then I need to save it to my AR Comics strip right there. And wave recording. Boom, boom, boom. So there we go. There's my my folder here. So I have the recordings and I have this. Hey, look at that. It's a move. A move? What's a move? That thing over there. Move! Yeah, so I got it there. Perfect. And so now it's time to uh add this to my folder so I'll go to assets and I'll go to create uh, folder and I'll go to sounds or I'll say audio like that and then from there I'll add the audio to it so go to the audio I just saved add it to it and what I'll do is I will go to AR content I need to make sure that, uh, yeah, go to AR content or comic strip. I suppose I could just use comic strip and then click create and go and add audio manager like that. So create an audio manager. It's a child of all the stuff, right? So a child of the AR comic. And so what I'll do is I will say, in my audio manager, I'll add a component and this will be, I'll just type in audio and I'll use audio source. And so now that I have an audio source here in the audio manager, I can drag this down into my timeline. When I do that, it will allow me to do an audio track here. So add audio track. And then what I can do is I could drag this right here, this image or not the image, but the uh, sound that I just recorded. Hey. Look at that. It and I could drag that over here. So now, here we go. This is it right here. And so now we could test this to see if it actually plays when we when we play it. And so I will just set my webcam up again and Let's give it a shot. Hey, look at that. It's a move. And I hide it and it doesn't play anymore. A move? What's a move? That thing over there. Moo! Yeah, just like that. And so it's working. So now that I have that working, Let's actually go through and uh, try to find some additional music and stuff. And so I'm, I think I want to look for something quirky. And so I could do that. So I'll go through and what I could do is actually duplicate this. Duplicate the audio manager and just delete the duplicate sound. And so now I have two audio tracks. And so now what I could do is I could go to Window, Asset Store, and I could search the asset store for sounds that I could include into it. So we'll just say, I'll just type in quirky and see what happens with it. Quirky, easy animal, vignette. Nope, don't want that. I'll say animal. So I'll look for, ooh, farm animals set. So that looks really interesting. So I might, uh, I might actually want to use that and then wonder what this is. 
does this give me any sounds? No, it doesn't look like it gives me any sound, so I don't want that. Um, I'm really just looking for sounds. And so, quirky animal series, don't want that. Animals here. We'll say animal sounds. So free sample pack. And it says that there's sounds here. Yeah, so we can check this out. So we'll use the 96 generic library, a general library. So I'll just add that to my stuff. It doesn't seem to have imported it, so let's give it a try again. There we go. And so I'll just download it. And I'll click import and import. Like that. And then I'll try to look for some background music. And I'll go to free and we got some, it says some psychedelic parts and some interesting stuff. Eh, I'll, I'll go with the, just want to look for something just nice and quirky. Oh, yeah. Platformer Music Pack. Let's see what that is. And so this is a huge file. This is a huge pack, but I think I'll only download one of them. And I think I, I want to use the chill, the chill sound. And so I'll just do that. So it says a gigabyte, but I'm not going to download all of the assets. And so I'll download. Well, I guess I will download it, but I won't only import one of them. Okay, so now that we have it downloaded, I'll just go ahead and click import and now I'm thinking about it. I'll just check out all of them since I downloaded the whole thing anyway. So we got some good ones here. We got some chill. Actually, I'll just uncheck this one, this one, this one, this one. And I want something that's happy and uplifting. And I don't want any rage or action. Actually, I'll just take the ones that are happy and uplifting. And uh, and I'll use those. And so I'll click import. So just clicking a fraction of them, just the happy and uplifting ones. I want something quirky. And now that it's done, I'll have I should have some extra stuff. So as I'm thinking about it, I'll probably have an additional. I probably need an additional audio track. And what I could do is I could create a track group, and this could be uh, called audio tracks. And this is just a way to be organized. And so I can just select each one of these track groups and select uh, hold shift and select to select them all. And I can 
just drag them in here. So now I can hide it, make it a little bit easier to operate and organize. And so then I'll go to, not images, but I'll go to my assets and I'll go to the games folder with the platformer, happy, and I have sunny sands. interesting go to this one yeah let's try this one yeah I'll do that one so I'll do the reunion and I'll just drag and drop that down here and I don't want it to play the whole thing so I want it to play a little bit uh, just a small amount so I'll go with this part. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo! Wait, dummy, that's a cow. A cow? Psst. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, and so. That sounds pretty good. That looks good. And so one of the things that I could do is you see how each one of the levels is about the same. The music is actually a lot louder than it than the voiceover. And so I could actually lower the level of the uh, sound by clicking the audio track here and just lowering the volume of it. And so I just lower the volume to about 68. Uh, I'll do 60. 0.6 is 60. And so now when I play it, that, it's a moo. And I could just continue move. to lower it down. What's a moo? Let's do about that thing over there. Moo! 40. Like that. You can make it even lower. What? You wouldn't be able to hear it as much. Dummy, that's a cow. A cow? And so I'll just do 40. <laughs> that's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it like says that. Moo. And so that's a way to just play around with levels and audio. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the generics library with the samples and I'll just see what stuff I could come up, what stuff I could find. And so we have animals, insects buzzing, uh, a cat meowing. What is this, a fart diarrhea? Hmm, let me see. Interesting. Uh, we have this. Okay. Um, so thine. Oh, so that's thunder. Uh, rain. Car revving, motor, switch, grass shards, uh, flamethrower. Hmm. Make that work. Let's see. When he says moo, we could have it say uh, flamethrower. What? Is Dummy! It's moo! So I could have it be just this part here. Ooh. I could lower it like that. Ooh. Then I could also bump this up. Actually, no. I just think I'll need to lower this volume. Woo! So I have that. And... We have some ambient bird sounds. 
And so I'll just create another, create something else. So I'll create another track and I'll just have these bird sounds play in the background as well. Just like that. Ooh. What? Just like that. And so, yep, just laid out some tracks right there. Worked out pretty good. Um, didn't get that moo sound that I kind of wanted, but oh well. It's uh, you just gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And so, let's actually test it out now. Hey, look at that. It's a moo! A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there! Moo! What? And it works. So, with the next activity, you could create custom sounds. And so, really think about it, right? Like, what unique experiences can you create with sound that really enhances the story you're trying to tell in the comic. See how far you can push your creativity by making an awesome sound design for your comic. And we did a little bit of it uh, during the activity and hopefully you could create more of it. And so now let's add some 3D models and 3D elements to it. Uh, and so what you could use is you could use Unity's 3D tools to give your comic more depth. And so you can use Pro Builder and Polybrush to uh, create more depth than something and it's really a great starting point to use that even if you don't have any 3d tool experience and so we'll actually go ahead and start doing that and so what we're going to do is what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to download two packages and so one package is going to be from the package manager and we're going to go to unity registry and we're going to go to polybrush or we're going to go to pro builder false so I'm going to install Pro Builder, so just install, and this allows you to build uh, 3D geometry. Perfect. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add some editor examples and runtime examples. The next thing I'm going to do is add Polybrush, which allows you to paint 3D models. You can paint and sculpt and I mean, you could do a lot of stuff with it. And so what I'll do is I'll do that and I'll click install. And after that finishes, what I'll do is I'll add shader examples. And voila, we got those. And so now, what I'll do is I'll go and I'll add the tools to my panel. So Pro Builder window, I'll add that to the dock, to the side, and then I'll go to tools again and I'll add polybrush window and I'll add that and I'll dock that at the bottom as well, like that. And so now that I have those, I will actually go to a different scene. So I'll create a new scene and this is where I'm gonna build out my, my environment for my 3D stuff. So I'll just do uh, 3D environment like that. So I'll double click it and it will take me to a new scene. And don't worry, this is, we're just going to be creating the 3D scene in here. And then we're going to be adding it to our uh, scene later. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to make a new shape. And so I'll be making a new shape which is gonna be my plane. And so I'll actually delete this and delete this, and I'll click the plus sign here in Pro Builder, and you'll see how it says plane here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna create a plane that has, it says width of how many segments? I want a, a width of, a width of four, and then, 
four by four. I'll just create a four by four like that. And then I'll have the segments be about 20 on each side and 20 on each side, 20 segments is a lot of segments, but it allows for us to uh, use a lot of great stuff with it. So we'll just do that and then we'll just click exit. And so now notice how we have a lot of planes on here, just like that. Perfect. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to go to materials and I'll create a new poly brush material. And so I'll go to materials and I'll call this one uh, poly brush matte like that. And I'll add that to my uh, material here. And then with that material, I'll go to poly brush and then I'll go to vertex color like that. And so you won't really notice anything different yet, but, uh, but we'll get there. And so right now I could just change this to just like a red or something like, just so I know what's going on. And what I'll do is I'll go to my poly brush and actually I'll just go through and I will duplicate this. And so I'll have this one be the ground and then this one will be sort of a, a box. And so I'll lower the box. And so in order to do that, we'll do object selection, select that. I'll select the box and I'll just lower it down. And then I'll choose edge selection. And with edge selection selected, actually, actually we'll probably want to create a new plane. So yep, so let's actually create a new plane now that I'm thinking about it. So go to new plane and I want this to be the same width, but I only want it to be one segment each for the new plane. So I'll build that and then I'll make that a child of the ground plane and I'll just zero it out. So zero and zero. And then I'll actually zero on this too. And so then I'll just lower it. So I'll go ahead and click object select. And I'll lower it down and then I'll click the side and I'll go to selecting the sides here. So I'll select those two sides. I'll select these two sides and I'll select the back two sides. And so what I'll do is I'll actually hold shift and then I'll take this up arrow right here, hold shift and take the up arrow, and then I'll actually lift it up and it'll extrude it. So you can see I'm extruding out now. Like that. And so now what I could do is I could take this edge right here, these two edges, and I could move over to another side and I could extrude this out and close the top of this box. And so I'll do that. Like that. So now I have a box. And so the next thing that I can do is I could create a new material. And this material I'll use as like a sky. And so I'll create this material. It'll be a sky material. So just sky material. I'll put it on here and I'll go ahead and make it just like a light blue, like we know the sky to be. But you'll notice that there is a lot of uh, shadows and stuff still. And we don't really want that. So you could change the material to an unlit material and we'll just do color, unlit color. And now it is flat. There are no shadows rendering on this. So it's, it looks pretty trippy. It's just a, a blue void, but it's going to make the effect really, really nice. And so now what we can do is I can go through, click save, and I'll actually make this polybrush material. I'll make the polybrush material green because this will be just like the grass that we want. And then what I could do is I could go to my polybrush material and I could click the poly brush tools right that we have here. And I could actually just sculpt it like that. 
So what Polybrush does is it allows you to sculpt in a very interesting way. And so I'll go through, set it up. I could change my brush. So you could change the brush by going to uh, holding control to make the outer edge smaller and then holding shift to make the inner edge smaller or, or larger. And you could just go through and holding shift and control makes the, the strength lower or higher. You just go through and you could just make some mounds like that. And if you want to smooth it, you could go to the smooth settings and you could smooth it down. And you're essentially just sculpting. And so we'll just keep going through, smoothing things down the way they need to be smoothed down. Go back to the poly brush. I can make it a little, little larger. And you could just. some more detail like that perfect and so what if I wanted this to have just like some mounds of dirt in the background I could do that by changing the color of it and so what I'll do is I'll go to my poly brush mat and I'll change this back to white and then I could go to my, this right here, the Polybrush Paint Tool. And with the Polybrush Paint Tool, I'll go through with the brush and I could choose a green color and then go through and I could start coloring. So I'll change the strength and I'll just start coloring this. And it colors based off of the vertexes. And so that's why we have so many uh, shapes here. We have a lot of shapes here because of the vertexes. So say I want to change this to a brown color for dirt. I could go ahead and do that. And so I could say, okay, let me, let me change the, the size right here. Let me change that size so I could do that. Boom. Have that strength be up. Maybe I want to have a uh, maybe a little darker brown. Could do that as well. Say I want the the rim, the edges to be like that. And then maybe I want to have some in the back here. You probably won't even see it really. But who cares? some back here and so now that we have that what I want to do is I want to add some 3d objects and some models and stuff right so now that we have our poly brush scene set up what we can do is we could actually kit bash it so we'll just go ahead and kit bash our scene with some stuff off the asset store and so use the assets from the Unity Asset Store and the internet to kitbash and make more details added to your scene. And so now that we have that, what I want to do is I want to add some like clouds and 3D models and objects and stuff. And so what I can do is I can go to my Asset Store. So just go to the Asset Store. And I'll say uh, Animals. Go to free assets and I like this farm asset pack. So I'll, I'll choose this and I'll add the assets. Perfect. So 
So I'll download that. Import it. Yes. And then I'll go back and I want to have probably some nature. So I'll look for some nature packs. Uh, I have this one called a, a simplistic low poly nature. Really nice, really easy. Has some grass and stuff like that. And so I will uh, actually let me let me try another one. I just want one with a very simple grass texture. So I'll do this one, the simple, the simple nature. I'll try this. And so I'll open the Unity, and I'll add this one. So it's the low poly simple nature pack. And so I'll import that as well. And then last but not least, I, I, I want some clouds. So I'll get some clouds. So again, check free. And then there's this 3D low poly uh, clouds pack that I could choose. And I actually, was there another one that I could choose from? Awesome animated clouds? Hmm. Don't say. Yeah, let's choose this one. Awesome low poly fantasy clouds. So I'll open immunity. I'll click download. I'll click import. And from there, I can just further build out this scene. So I have my ground. And so I could go through, I can make a new game object and call this uh, nature. And then I can make another game object and call this animals. And remember, I have this scene called the moo, right? And so I just want to create a scene that uh, that has the cow in it with some nature. And so that's really the, the focus of it. And so what I'll do is I will go through and I have my assets here, fantasy cloud. So I'll add some models of clouds here. Got demos. Really just want these models. So don't want any terrain meshes or anything. Although these might actually would be really nice. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just get some clouds. So I'll get probably the first three clouds here. Add those to it. They're really big. So I'll just make them much smaller. Like that. And then I will drag them up. And I'll just put one there, put one here, put one over there. And I suppose I could add some more. Since there's five of them. Might as well just add all five. They're low poly, so I'm not going to kill our performance too much. And so I'll do that. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom. Then I'll take this one and I'll move this over here like that. So I'll give it, I'll have this one be over here. That's a little too high. I'll have this be like up here. Now rotate this one, rotate that one. You know, this one I could duplicate a couple of times and Allow it to that. I guess I can move this over here. Move this over here. And yeah, I mean this is this is what I got. I got the clouds. And so I could actually make a material for it because the materials don't really look very good. And so what I'll do is I'll make a new material and this one will be just clouds. And what I'll do is I'll just put the material on 
all the different clouds here. So I'll go to materials here and I'll just replace this. So I'll just say replace with clouds like that. And since it's red, we don't want red. We'll want sort of like a, a whitish blue or whatever. And then it has these, you know, it has the shade shaders on it. And so, yeah, I think this is good. I think that's good right there. Perfect. And so now what I could do is I could add to my scene some simple nature stuff, right? So I have prefabs, I have grasses, I have trees, I have all that stuff. And so I could actually add that and paint that on to my, uh, to my scene here. And so what I could do is paint it on. So I'll go through, I'll grab these, uh, I have a whole bunch of different you know, 3D models and stuff that I could choose from. And so I have two grasses. So these two grasses, I could go through and I could, here's the color palette with the prefabs. And I could take these here, drag them here, and I could add them. And now I could paint on. So I could go through and paint this grass on just like that. It's pretty cool. So as I go through, I can just go through, paint, 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 paint. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Like that. And so I have tons of, I have tons of these grass textures and stuff on it now. And so I could select them all and I can just add them to my nature palette. Like that. And so the next thing I could do I could add these trees to it and what I'll do is I'll add just a couple of trees and I'll just make this very very small. So I add the trees, select these trees, and I'll lower the frequency of it and then I'll go through and paint. And these trees, as you can see, are huge. And so I think it's probably better for me to not paint the trees. The grass is fine, not necessarily paint the trees. And what I'll do is uh, I'll actually just drag the tree over like that and just lower it, make it smaller. So select the game object, go to pivot so that the transform is there. I'll just make it smaller like that. Same thing with this one, just make it smaller. This one, yeah, make it smaller too, like that. So now come through, can place this here, place this one here. And then I can place this one Pretty much here, like that, and perfect. I got my I got my scene with my new trees. So lastly, I could start adding. So I'll just add these here to the nature, and then lastly, I could add some animals. So animals, animals are easy. We just go through, go to where we downloaded the animals and the animals pack that we got. Let's say cow. Yeah, I wonder where, where did it go? Okay, color farm animals. Okay, so vertex color. Okay, there we go. There we go, I know where it's at now. Vertex color farm animals is where it's at. And then I have my cows. And so I have this cow here. What I'll do is I'll have it sort of face this way over here. And I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. like that. And so I'll just place this right here. And then I could have another one, so I'll duplicate it. 
and I'll just have this one back here. I'll rotate it like that. So we got the animals, boom, just like that. And voila, I have my, I have my scene now. And so the next thing that I could do is I can make this a prefab so we could add it to our AR scene. And so what I'll do is I'll right click, create, folder, call this prefabs. And then I'll drag and drop this down in there. And so now that I have it set there, I could save it and I could head back to my AR scene. I go to my prefabs and in the content that I have, my AR content, I could actually do something interesting. So I can rotate this first. So I'll first rotate my comic strip to negative 90. And then after that, I can add my prefab into my AR content for my panel too. So add the prefab in there. It's gonna be huge. And so what I'll do is I'll just make it smaller. First I'll look for it, there we go. We say negative 90, or actually we'll say 90. Perfect. I'll make it zero, I'll zero it out, and then I'll make it significantly smaller. So now that I did that, should be able to make it small enough or large enough like that. Perfect. And I'll go through and I'll add this in here. And I'll just make it a little larger. Like that. And because I have polybrush and the other stuff, I can actually create something cool. So this is what we got right here. So save. And so now, one of the things that I want to do is actually find a way to integrate this in. And we'll do this in the challenge that we have. And so, what we have in Activity 3 is, now that we have a 3D object in our scene, right? Let's try to actually integrate that seamlessly into it using a depth mask and some other assets. And so, what does it look like to add depth to an environment, right? That's, that's really what we're exploring. And so what we're going to use is uh, Pro Builder, and we're gonna use some depth paths, and we're gonna give the comic panel more depth by turning it into a portal for this environment. And so feel free to pause it if you need to, to, to try to create this yourself. Otherwise, we'll create it now. And so what I'll do right now is I wanna actually just make a panel and so i'll do a panel by just creating a new shape with polybrush or with the uh, pro builder and this new panel will be essentially a one by one by one line segments one actually i don't want any line segments like that so it's just going to be one panel and i'll click build perfect and so now what I'll do is I, and the reason I want it to be one panel is because I want one edge. So that means I have one edge for this and that's perfect. And so what I'll do is I'll change to a material. I'll create a material that's just a transparent one. 
and I'll click create material transparent material just like that and so what I'll do is I'll change it to transparent and I'll lower the opacity down so that it's transparent and I'll drag that on there so you can kind of see through it the next thing I'll do is I'll rotate it negative 90 degrees so that it's sort of flat and then what I'll do is I will just make it smaller and so what I'll do is I'll just change it to just select the object and I want to move it in so I'll move it in like that and I'll move it in like that so you have a lot of control over this and we're in perspective mode now but I'll do front actually no I want to do back yeah I'll use back and then what I'll do is I want to say okay that's the portal that I want it's the sort of the space that I have right now and so I'm going to do again I'm going to do back and I'm going to take this and I'm going to lower it to here take this I'm going to lower it down there that's good and I want to make this go around it so essentially I'm going to be making a huge box around my uh, 3D 3D scene environment and afterwards I'll select all of my groups there and then I'll go to the side view and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to pull it out and it's going to extrude like that perfect just like that and then last but not least I could close it off by taking the edge and as you take that edge you lift up and you close it like that so now I go back to my back perspective and I have a transparent box that goes around it pretty crazy so with that transparent box what the next thing I want to do is I want to create a portal for me to look into my uh my comic and so with that portal what i'll do is actually lose the panel that i had and i'm going to go through and i'm just going to go to select faces and i'm going to select the front face that i have i'm going to select this face right there yep so i just want to select that and i'll go to the scale tool and I'll hold shift and this will when I scale down it's going to create a new face and scale it down like that so it's really easy and so now I can just move it down a little bit move this face down so that it fits that panel that I have I'll have the perspective back again so I could use there we go like that I get lift it up make it fit as good as I can and then I'll go to edge selection and I'll just start selecting the edge and move it in take this edge and I'll move that in or I'll move it up and then have this edge I'll move uh, I think we're I think we're good here and then this edge I'll move down like that and actually I want to move this over just a little bit more like that perfect and so now I have a portal and so the last thing I'll need to do is I'll create a new material and with that new material I'll call that D-E-P-T-H mask and what a depth mask does is 
it'll essentially say that anything that is covered by the depth mask uh, will be invisible. And before I do that, actually, I completely forgot. I need to select this. So I'll go to face select right here. And I need to select my face that I just created. With my panels, I need to click, select my face. And it's not letting me select it, so I'm just going to sort of lock all the other stuff that I have. And then I'll try to select the face. There you go, perfect. And I'll go down to delete faces right here. So select that, it deletes it, and it makes a hole. And now that I've deleted that face, now there's a hole, it's sort of like a portal. And so this is where the magic happens. This is where, this is my best part, my favorite part. So I get to click the depth mask that I have. I'll go to shader or standard in our shaders and I'll go to depth mask and it sort of makes it invisible. And so when I drag it over to here, it makes that invisible like that. Pretty trippy, huh? And so now what I'll do is I will actually just test it out. And so I know that panel two is the Moo panel. And so what I'll do is I will just exit this out. And what we'll do is I will save it and let's test it out. Hey, look at that. It's a Moo. A Moo? What's a Moo? That thing over there! Moo! What? Dummy, that's a cow! Okay, so it didn't necessarily work for me right now. And I'm going to see why. Because it should have. And so you can see it's not appearing. But for some reason it, it does appear when, it, when you test it out. Oh, and it's because I need it to be in the panel with it. Silly me. Okay, so now, so make sure that you have all of your your panels and everything, the planes, the panels, I'll call this uh, depth mask. Make sure that you have everything that you need in your panel under the game object. And so I'll click save. And we'll give it a try again. Part two. Hey, look at, that. look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo! Just like that. And so we were able to create a 3D environment and actually create a portal for it. So that was actually pretty cool. And so hopefully you're able to follow along and uh, would love to see what portals you were able to make. Brush or anything as well either. So if you want to keep them, you can, but I'm just going to close it so that I don't uh, have any wasted space with it. And so now we know that we have our audio tracks, but it's time to add some animation. And so what I'll do is I'll add a track for each. I'll just drag and drop each uh, panel and each panel will have its own activation layer. So I'll just control all these. First I need to make sure that I click the this box right there, and then I'll go ahead, drag and drop all these, and I'll call these activation tracks. And the first thing I wanna do is just lay out my timeline. And so with the timeline, right? Uh, panel one will go, then panel two, panel three, panel four, and then ultimately panel five will be the last one, right? And so in order to do that, I need to actually uh, have them play out. And so let's just go through and just start laying these down. And so the activation tracks, right? They, whenever the activation track is on, it'll show stuff. And when it's off, it'll not show anything. And so we'll just have it sync with the audio. And so we'll just play the audio and then we'll uh, line up all the panels. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? 
That thing over there! So I'll add this here, and I'll have this start a little right when the uh, speech starts. And then from there, I'll have this one sort of overlap. Hey! Look at- And so at the end of that, I'll have that start, and that finish, and we'll have this one start here. What? Dummy, that's a cow. A cow? Pfft. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says Moo. So I call it a Moo. How do we... And so that's where that ends, and then this one is where this one begins. So I'll go ahead and add this one. Out of respect, you know? No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. And so after that, I'll have this one. And then last but not least, I'll mm. add the one at the end to the last. Whatever, you fool. It says moo. I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. Like that. And so we could play it out. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo! And so with this, as I'm thinking about it, right? I could actually push this back inside the actual depth mask and give it a make it work. So I'll just push this back, go inside the depth mask if I could find it. Click, I know it's a hide, so I could just unhide it. And I could have this actually come out of the the mouth of the cow. So I can just line it up with the cow and give the speech bubble some depth as well. Just gotta find the right angle. If I can find that right angle, perfect. It quite literally have it coming out of his mouth and yeah looks like that works I'll go ahead and make this a little smaller have it come back over like that perfect so we got that and then I could turn the depth mask on and it works. And so I have everything synced now. Everything synced. And so notice how I actually got rid of the panel that I'm not even using. So I'm not using this panel. So because I'm not using the panel, I could just get rid of it. It's a great reference point, but I don't need it. And so now that I have that, I could go through and start animating all the different panel assets that I have. And so what I'll first do is I'll start with panel one and I'll just try to sync all the different uh, assets that I have. So I know that these are already there. So I'll just drop this down. I'll make them animation tracks. And so with these animation tracks, I'll say, okay, Start with this here and this here. Hey! Hey! So we have, I'm saying hey. 
So I'll go ahead and say I have this. Uh, I'll essentially have this just like scale in. And so I'll first start off with it being like this. And actually being smaller. So it's going to scale down and it's going to scale up. So, like that. What I could do is I could just make this a little smaller. And I'll say, okay, so this is where it starts. I'll say this is. We'll add a key here, and then I'll have this be a larger key, and it comes down. So, hey, like that. Hey, look at that. It's, it's a move. Okay, so we have our first bubble popping in. It just really pops in like that. And so we'll go through and I'll show you a real easy technique that makes things really easy to have it really pop up. And so that, it's a moo. A moo. So then this one right here, what I'll do is I will say, it's like a moo. Actually, I'll have it to where this one doesn't, this one will start off at the scale. So I'll just add a key and then it'll shrink down. So it'll shrink down after like eight frames. So we'll go back down. Actually, now that I think about it, what's a moo? That thing over there? Yeah, so then I'll have this. I'll add a key here. Add. And then I'll have it be smaller. So I'll shrink it. And here, I'll shrink it as well. So now, whenever the person speaks, then it pops up, but it doesn't stay up the whole time. And so now, a moo. That's what I'll do with this one too. So I'll first start off by selecting this one right here, and I'll right click and add key. And then I know that this is at the end of where he speaks. So then I'll right click and add a key here. So this is exactly where he wants to start. So now I want to animate it in. So I'll go through and I'll just scale it down, make it small. And then I'll go through here and I'll make it small too, like that. And so to have that like pop up effect where it sort of bounces in like that, I could go through and I could go through a couple, go back a couple of frames. And I could zoom in and show you. I could go back a couple of frames. And so one, two, and I could just make it larger. It's really large. And so now I have that pop up effect because it goes bigger and then it gets smaller. And so I always do about like two to three frames before the final keyframe. Right, and so we could do that with this one too. So, so go one, two, it'll go three, and then what I'll do is I'll actually make it bigger like that. And I could actually do that with this one too.
So go one, two, and I'll select it and make it bigger. And then here, it's going down, right? So I'll go one, two, and I'll make it bigger. And so now let's actually test it. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo. So that, that worked for the first one. Cool. So now let's start adding it to the other ones. So I have that one. This one works. So I'll add this to panel two. So just make an animation track. And what I can do is I can't really see it right now. So I'll just get rid of this depth mask for a little bit, but I know that I want this to be a scale. So I want to be able to have the scale here. So I'll just right click add key and then I'll right click add key again probably like right here and then I kind of have it down to a formula already so I know that like you know around six seven second at uh, six seven frames I want to scale it down so I'll just scale it down really really small And then I'll do the same thing here. I'll scale it down really, really small. And so how small is it? Yep, there we go. And so now I could go to here and I could say, and I could zoom into this. And I could literally do this, use a formula for this. So one, I'll go one, two, three and then I'll make it really big. And then here it's one, two, three, and here I'll make it really big. And so now, if you can see it, Ooh! like that, really simple. You're just following that formula. And so then after that, I'll click stop recording and that's my animation track right there. And so that's pretty much what I'll do for the rest of them, where I'll go to the panel. And with that panel, select like this one, I'll go through, and I have two different ones here. And so what I'll do is I'll say this and this get a animation track. So under panel three, animation tracks, and I'll just start by hitting the record button on both of them. And so I know it starts around here. Wait! Dummy! Now start right here. So this will be where it says what? Dummy? And so I'll click scale. Cool. And then Wait! Dummy, that's a cow. And so then I'll have it have an ad here. A cow. And then with this one. A cow. Have a cow. Now I'll click scale. Cow. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says Moo. So I call it a Moo. Then I'll click Add Key there. And now I'll go here and this will be really small. Go here. This will be really small. And then I'll go here and I'll make this one, two. And 
Yeah, and it all good. One, two, three. And I'll just make this big. And here, say one, two, three. I'll make this big. And then for this one, I know this is an add key here. And this is going to be really small. So what I'll do, whoops, I'll just go ahead and update that key. And it's not really much we could do about this, so this just happens really fast. And then this one, I can make this a little bit better. And so I'll go through and make this really small now. And then I'll say one, two, three, and then I'll make it really big, like that. So now, boom, 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 like that. And it pops in, just like that. So now, we got this one. So I'll just move on long. Panel four. So I'll select the two and I'll drag them down. Animation track. So start the animation track. Out of respect, you know? Out of so this is where he kind of starts talking. So he says, out of respect, you know? And so I'll hit a key there. Out of respect, you know? And then at the end of him talking, I'll hit add a key there. No. No. So then I'll make a key here for when he says no. Add a key. No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. And so I'll go ahead and just add a key there. And in many ways, I could just, now that I know where the main keys are, I could go and I could just add the, the large key first. So one, two, three. And I could just say bigger. And I could go to the end here. And I could just say really small. And the same here. It's one, two, three. And I could say bigger. And then I could go a little bit further. And I could say really small. And then from here, literally the same thing. So one, two, three, it's like this. We we'll say bigger. And then a little bit ways away, we'll say really small. And then this one here, one, two, three, say bigger. And then We'll say really small, like that. So now let's check it out. Out of respect, you know? No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. What? Just like that. And so that's done. So we got one more, one more panel. And so this panel should be really interesting. And so I have had that depth mask back in. So I have the anger symbol and I have whatever full. And so I'll add this to it, animation tracks, and I'll just lift this up just to separate it, separate the panels. 
like so. And since I have my animation tracks going, I'll go ahead and click start right there. And so what I'll do here is I know that he's going to be starting the speech here. So I'll just use this for the whatever fool. And so I'll just have add the key. And then I'll just say at the end of the speech, because I, I could just spitball it. So I'll say add key there. So I have these two keys. I know that this is where it's going to be really, really small. And this is where it's going to be really, really small. So this animates in, but this is going to be really, really small. So I'll go ahead, boom. Now it's going to be really, really small, like that. So then I'll do the same thing. So one, two, three, and I'll just make this big. And one, two, three. I'll do two for this one. Two. And we'll make this really big. So, for the last speech bubble. Whatever, fool. It says moo. I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. And I wonder if I could make it get bigger and bigger as he starts talking. So we have this, so at the end of it, you get to a, a larger scale. So we'll just add a key there. Then when we get here, we could add a key and then with that, he, it gets bigger. I think that would be pretty fun. So it's like he gets bigger. And then we'll add that key again. And then when it gets here, it gets even bigger. And then when it gets here, we'll add a key. And it gets even bigger. Like that. And then when it gets here, we'll just add a key and it'll shrink back down. Like that. So we could always add like a little pop as usual in between. Think to just add a little add a little pizzazz to it. And so now let's give it a shot. Whatever fool it says moo, I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. Maybe a little too much, but I'll take it. <laughs> and so now I'll click stop and that's what we have for this. And so now what I could do is I could, we could go ahead and just have a, an infinite loop for this anger symbol. And so what I'll do is I'll hit record and I'll just have a keyframe here, so I'll add a key. And then what I'll do is I will go three frames, and I could just make it go bigger, and then I could go another couple of frames, and then I can make it go smaller, like that. And so now, it looks like he's getting now it looks like it's sort of animating in like that. And compared to the other ones, what I'll do with this one is a, real, is a little different. So I, I had it three keyframes right here. 
right? I added three keyframes. And so now what I can do is I could say end record. And if I want these to loop indefinitely, I don't have to keep adding keyframes. I could go to the three dots and I could convert to a uh, clip track. And so I convert to clip track and now it converts to an actual animation clip. And I could go to the animation clip and I could say loop like that. And so now when I click it, notice how it's animating now. Just like that. So now let's just give it a shot. Whatever, fool. It says moo. I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. And so now we have everything working as we would like it to. We have this animation track with animations, frame by frame animations. We did some tweening. We have some sounds of a lot of stuff going on, right? And so with it, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and give it a shot. We'll test it out. And if we test it out, we're on the right track. We did something cool. So here's the test. Hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo! What? Dummy, that's a cow. A cow? Psst. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says moo. So I call it a moo. Out of respect, you know? No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. Whatever, fool. It says moo. I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. And so, as an activity, right? Uh, take your comic to new heights. And do that by animating various elements of your comic. Add animation to your panels, speech bubbles, and any other digital assets you want to include. And it's really about pushing the envelope with animation. We showed you a flurry of different things from frame by frame animation to importing stuff in. You can even add 3D animation if you want. And then once you finish animating on it, try to expand on it. Build on what you've learned by adding more sounds, by adding more animation, and particle effects if you like, uh, to make it just more immersive. It's really all about what stuff you could add to the experience so that you could make it more engaging and really just wow people with uh, the combination of the vision and the storytelling. And so as we wrap this up, right, we did a lot of different things. We, if you follow from the whole series, you were able to create a comic and then you're able to make the comic for the web, color it, do all that stuff. And then we were able to actually augment it. And so we explored what an augmented reality comic was. There's tons of examples that we have. We planned out our augmentation elements. We separated our individual comic elements. We set up Unity, imported Vuforia and Engine. We set up an augmented reality image target. We added animation, you know, an animation timeline. We added sounds and voiceovers, added animated elements. We built 3D objects with ProBuilder. We created a portal with depth mass. We created an environment with PolyBrush. We added elements to give it more depth. And then we explored other techniques to make the comic really come to life. And for me, you know, creating AR comics is, a, is such a great and wonderful opportunity. And I really enjoy it. And so I hope that you enjoy making this and learning how to augment your comics, learning more about augmented reality, the possibilities of it. And uh, for me, as a lover of comics and animation and AR, this is a way to combine all of this into a very interesting and immersive experience that will give you the skills to do a whole lot of interesting stuff with. And so if you could pull this off and pull this off across all your comic books, man, only... Only, you know, the world knows and, you know, it, it, I just think that it, 
it'll really change the game, especially as we get more AR glasses and as we get more tools to make hands-free AR so much more meaningful. And so print media and comics uh, and animation and AR, there's a, there's a place for you there to bring stuff to life in an innovative way. And uh, I hope that this gave you a, a good reference point to show what is the possibilities for you. And so again, my name is Steven Christian. I make comics and cartoons and really all it's about creating opportunities that allow you to uh, do more do more stuff with and with this is free tools and so you know really it's all about inspiring you to create you know a world that includes you and makes things more immersive and makes things more outstanding and so again my name is Steven Christian and I hope you learned some valuable skills from this and you got to make some cool stuff I definitely want to see it so be sure to post it and uh, tag me in it and all that good stuff and I hope to see you for the next augmented reality episode of tutorials and skill building. So, adios.